<laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Gapa, why do you have Transformers Cyberverse Ultimate Class Megatron? You said time and time again that you weren't in for the Cyberverse line. And I'm not. I sort of almost ended up having this guy by accident, and I'll explain that in a couple of minutes. But since we have him in hand, we might as well take a look at him, I guess. So this guy is going to be the focus of the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. I'm so glad that you're here. Please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and me everywhere. And this is Ultimate Megatron, who's anything but Ultimate. He's not. I'm not even going to joke and pretend that he is. By now, I gotta know that he's not. He's just not. I obtained this guy because of a customer service issue that I had where I was missing a tire off of my punch counterpunch that I ordered six months ago. Um, yeah, it, this was a, the end of a six month story getting this guy in hand. And this was the replacement sent to me. I get it. Punch counter punch, 40 bucks. This guy retails for 40 bucks. But like, is he really worth it? Is he really, is this worth 40 bucks? I don't think so, but we'll give it a chance. We'll give it a shot. Let's head over to the table, take a closer look at him. And while we've been working our way through wave one of the siege line, we're going to take a little pit stop here now to take a look at something else. Yeah, I figured that this was as good of a time as any to do it because we just recently looked at the Siege Megatron, which retails around here for about 40 bucks. And I said in that review that the Megatron was very good. Now it came with a, a caveat. You can check it out and see what that was. But when it came to guilty or innocent for the price, I did say that, by rights, he is innocent and that, yeah, the increase is probably warranted. Probably. Now, I compared him to many a Megatron, but not this Megatron, because we're going to look at this guy now. Why are we looking at something from the Cyberverse line? Why are we looking at Ultimate Megatron? We're, we're about to see how ultimate he is. We're looking at him because, if you haven't been paying attention, let me take a second to fill you in. This is the conclusion of a six month long story regarding my Power of the Prime Special Edition Punch Counterpunch, who by now a lot of people know was missing a tire. Luckily, I was able to source one from a friend of the channel, Matthew, and I still appreciate him doing that. I'm glad I was able to help save a couple of his figures with repairs, uh, namely an animated Bumblebee and an Energon Optimus Prime, both of which I looked at here on the channel some time ago. And I ordered the Punch Counter Punch from Amazon and they were good enough to give me a, a refund or a partial refund to go toward sourcing a tire, but I figured the manufacturer would send me the best thing and I did an unboxing and this is what was sent as my equivalent value item. Indeed, Punch Counter Punch was about 40 bucks and this guy also retails for 40 bucks. Now we have two Megatrons currently retailing in my neck of the woods for $40. The Siege one and this one. Which one is really better? I said when I looked at my best and worst figures of 2018, I gave an honorable mention, because I don't own anything from Cyberverse, but I gave an honorable mention to the Cyberverse line, or a dishonorable mention, if you will, that they were, bar none, the worst figures of 2018. And I said I could have filled out all 10 spots with Cyberverse figures. Maybe I was being too harsh. Maybe. Maybe. We're about to find out. We're going to take a look at this guy. Here he is in packaging. It's, it's packaging. You know, it is what it is. I guess the Decepticon logo up there is nice. Uh, the the art down here is pretty cool. Like, I, I dig the kind of blast look there. Uh, you know, here's the thing. He's called Ultimate Class, but they're also called Action Attackers. So, you got to take it for what it is. This is a gimmick line. It is what it is. This nonsense has the Fusion Mega Shot. Fusion cannon, just let it be a fusion cannon. It don't have to have a mega nothing. What is it? What is it with like everything having to be mega ultra super? Like I don't like that stuff. It's too anime for me, and I'm not an anime fan at all. You know, I just I it's not for me. It's just it's not for me. It's for somebody that somebody is not me. 
And then of course it says two attack modes. I don't even know what that means. On this side we have artwork of Cyberverse Megatron. I guess that looks all, I, I suppose that's all right. On this side we have the artwork. It's fine, like it's true to the, to the program. And then we come to the back and the ever popular product shots. I have to say that because there's no collector card here at all. Now let's be clear for a second. In terms of size, this is about the height of a traditional leader class figure. It's, it's big, there's no doubt about it. It's big. But for the size, it only takes eight steps to convert. You got some vo or some leaders, even some voyagers that are like 32 to 40. So this is obviously intended to be far simpler. Not as simple, for example, as rescue bots, but far simpler. So let's take it with a grain of salt here, guys. Let's take it with a grain of salt and get him out of package now. He comes with these snazzy jazzy instructions. It's blue and yellow. Uh, it, um, they're all right. I mean, do they really need to be that good? They're only showing eight steps. And it shows the gimmick really on the other side. Like you see the end result over here of his tank mode. And if we turn it over, we can see the robot mode. And, oh, hold on. We can see him doing the fusion mega shot thing, you know. I'm not digging that. Anyway, you're a weird dude, Megatron, a really weird dude, and we're gonna get into that in a bit, but I mean, just to kind of give some size comparisons here, with Generations Deluxe and the other Generations Deluxe, or my custom version of him, Transformers Prime Voyager, or maybe the equally strange movie Voyager, Third party Hegemon, my custom Titans Return Megatron, who I actually really like now that I've done the custom work on him. And last but not least, Siege Megatron as a Voyager class. Both of these stand as $40 figures. And just for kicks to show that he is indeed the height of a traditional leader class figure, not a Siege leader class figure because those things are not very big, but a traditional leader class figure, you can see he's, he scales here with Power of the Primes Optimus Prime, no problem for height. So we don't need to do uh, Guilty or Innocent here because I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this is not worth 40 bucks. This is not worth 40 bucks at all. It's ridiculous to say. To say that this is the same value as, uh, you know, Deluxe Class Punch, Counter Punch, even with his QC issues, is laughable. It's ridiculous. No, this is a good, like, if you can get it on, on sale, uh, if you can get it on clearance for 50% off, get it for 20 bucks. Now, this is Canadian, 20 bucks Canadian. When I say $40, that's Canadian. I should clarify all of that before people, you know, are like, $40, he's not $40, blah, blah, blah. He is here. He's $39.99 Canadian, so I don't know what he is anywhere else in the world, but, like, it's not, it's not worth that. It's fine, $20, $15, $20 figure. If we're talking in terms of, say, uh, U.S. dollars, uh, I don't know what he retails for. My guess would be about 30 bucks. Um, you know, he's not worth 30 U.S. dollars. I, twelve fifty. you know? It, it's a fine $12.50 toy, I guess. Possibly, maybe, but that's about it. There's no doubt in my mind. So I don't think I, I don't, I'm not satisfied with what I got as equal value because I don't believe it's equal value. That's not to say that it's bad. It's just to say like, if you see these warming shelves, there's a reason because people that might be interested in them for the most part, I think are going to wait until they go on sale. And so you should. That being said, if you are in for this and you are in for the cyber verse line and you're in for this size of a Megatron, and you get this guy, I think you might as well get the Optimus too. Like, you might as well have the pair, you know, have a matching set of bookends. What about the score for this guy? Because, like I said, we don't have to do guilty or innocent. He's guilty. He's not worth his price. But that's not to necessarily say he's bad either. In terms of his paint apps, um, like, he definitely looks like the show. But I don't think the show makes Megatron look very good. Uh, like, uh, most of the nods are there. You're probably missing a couple of little red accents, but nothing major. There's a couple of, I think, extra red accents on his cannon that I don't think he normally has. 
Uh, I wish that they had decided, are we going with gray plastic or silver paint? Because there's a bit of both. It's like, guys, choose one or the other. You can't do both. Or if you're going to do the head in silver, at least, at the very least, do the shins and maybe like these kind of squarey pieces in his shoulder. Um, uh, like this squarey piece in his shoulder. Like at least do that in silver as well so that it's not just the head because the head kind of sticks out like a sore thumb to me it looks like that Megatron I just I don't think that's a great Megatron I, it, ah. it's a 9 for accuracy there you go it's a 9 for accuracy you definitely know it's Megatron so I have to say that I aesthetically I'm a G1 guy what do you want but like even Transformers Prime I like. Aesthetically, it's not quite for me. I get what they were going for. So it's, it, like, we'll say it's a, we'll say it's a nine. That being said, there's a couple of oddities with this Megatron. Like I said, the design isn't really for me. Like, like, okay. His head has, like, kind of odd face proportions to me. I don't, I can't even put my finger on it. It just does. We've already talked about the silver, but here's the thing that really gets me. Turning them side on here. Like, what, what, <laughs> What's going on? What's going on with his body here? Why are his hips so protruding forward? Like, I see this guy and all I can think is, like, he's like that guy who, you know, it's your 30-year high school reunion and this is the dude that shows up wearing the, you know, the huge gold chains and he has the shirt, like, unbuttoned down to his belly button and his chest hair is out and he's talking cool and he's like, hey, ladies, like, I... <laughs> I have done well in life. You should get to know me. Like, it's like he got that swagger. It's like they're trying to position his abdomen and pelvis so that he has swagger and it doesn't work. It just makes his body look weird. I don't, no, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not for me. I don't know if anybody else has even noticed it or would notice it, but I certainly did immediately. And I was like, this is weird, man. This is just weird. Okay. So, we do have a 9 for accuracy. I, it's Megatron. There's no doubt about it. What about the articulation for the guy? Okay, well, now surely this is going to be great because he's 40 bucks, right? So, it should be good. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. So, the head cannot go left or right. It can... Doodly, 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 doodly. It can do that because of transformation. But, like, it doesn't move. It does not budge. The arm here... It can go all the way around. His fusion cannon arm goes all the way around. His other arm, it too can go all the way around. It can go well out to the side. We, I guess, I guess we have a butterfly. I guess we can call it a butterfly forward, I suppose. Um, if, like, showing his muscles, I guess. Um, taking that back. And, and it does all clip in, so like I give credit where credit is due there. We have nothing at the wrist, and though it's behind his fusion cannon, nothing at this wrist. The fusion cannon does not come off, it is stationary, and he does not have any elbows. We have ultimate Megatron, and the dude can't even bend his arm to scratch his nose. No bicep swivel. So all we have is the arm can go around 360 degrees and it can go straight out from his body like that. Okay. Um, I guess. I guess. The Fusion Cannon itself, uh, it has a, is it a button or something? I don't, I don't know. This is, yeah, there's a button here. So what you'll do is you'll put the arms together and you press a button and it makes gray pieces come out here that pushes in here and it will make these pieces like of the cannon basically pop out and it comes down like this. And all of this is painted. All of it. It's all black plastic painted this like, I guess, inner Johnny pink color. So I, I like, I, I, I guess I, I suppose that's cool. I guess. I don't know. Is that cool? I don't even know anymore. Um, but continuing the articulation, we do not have a waist. We have hips that can go forward on heavy ratchets that far, which is fine. Back, fine. Uh, out to the side on friction, but they're friction well, like they're not falling. Uh, no thigh swivel at all. Uh, and a knee to just under 90 degrees. Uh, a heel that moves, a toe that moves up and down, no ankle tilt. It's, 
It's better articulation than a rescue bot. It is not as good as the Generations line, as the Studio Series line. It is not as good as the recent Robots in Disguise 2015 line. It is very much, I think, intended for an extremely small niche market. Rescue Bots is for extremely little kids. Um, Generations is for older kids and collectors. Uh, early collectors and those who are not interested in or cannot afford the super high-end like masterpieces and whatnot that cost hundreds of dollars and getting more and more ridiculously expensive. This is intended for that child who has some experience with like maybe one step and three step changers, uh, maybe rescue bots, but doesn't have enough experience to kind of handle the complexities for the generations line, but they could be somewhere in between. So this is for a child who has a, a little bit of experience, but not very much. The articulation overall is like a four, maybe. It's not good. It's barely above a Titan Master as far as I'm concerned. It's terrible. He should have had a thigh swivel. He, even if he didn't have a thigh swivel, let's, let's, let's forgive him that. Let's even forgive that his head doesn't move around. Let's even forgive that there's no waste. For an ultimate Megatron, he should at least have elbows. See, this is my problem with the way some of this stuff gets labeled. A masterpiece means perfection, and they are not perfect. So you're lying. That is false advertising as far as I'm concerned. They call this ultimate. It is not ultimate. It can't even bend its arm. That is not ultimate. That is false advertising as far as I'm concerned. It's lies, and that bothers me. It really bothers me because you're touting something as fantastic and giving it an associated price tag based on that sort of perception that you're putting out there when in reality when you get it in hand it's not as fantastic as I think you thought it was gonna be. If I was a kid and got this and had experience with some decent Transformers I would be really disappointed that he doesn't have elbows. The only way I wouldn't be disappointed with this is if I got it and I had, you know, only a little bit of experience, I was pretty young and I didn't care. I was just glad that it went, you know, back and forth between two modes. If that's the kind of, you know, fan that you know of, if that's the kind of child that you know of or that you have or whatever, then this is for him or her, no doubt. If you have a kid that is used to playing with your generation's toys, you know, take them off the shelf and share with your kid. I don't think that this is going to be for that kid because they have too much experience. This will be below their level. Um, so we have a, a four. We have a nine. I don't know. Right now, this guy's getting maybe a six. Maybe. Let's do the conversion. Uh, oh, before we do the conversion, let's see. You know, because he has two attack modes. One of those attack modes is in robot mode where you pick up his arms like this. And you bring this forward. And you bring this forward. And, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even... Can this, can I even get this to go together now? There, wow. This is one of his, maybe do it this way. Here, this is one of his attack modes. If you can get him to, to stand like that. Okay, so we're gonna do the conversion next. And it's not hard, but full disclosure, this is my fourth time trying to do it. The first two times I explicitly tried following the directions, their trash garbage throw them away. They're no good. They are awful, actually. Uh, I could not follow them. I absolutely, for eight steps, folks, I could not follow the instructions. I found them that bad. Um, I had to I had to figure it out my, myself, and it's just easier to do it that way as far as I'm concerned. Um, then we had a, a third attempt, and on the third attempt, my, my camera stopped recording. I, I reached the, the limit on my card. So this is the, this is the fourth attempt at this guy, which is sad. It's just sad because he's not hard. You'll see, he's really anything but hard. I'm not following the instructions. I'm doing it my own way. I think it's the easiest way. I think it's the right way. I think it's the way that will make you feel good about this guy, or as good as you can. Remember, he's getting a six. So we bring these arms up. We flip, if we can, we flip this little tab out on the inside of his leg. There's a little 
like a tab right here that goes into a rectangular slot on the leg here. So it looks like that. And now his legs are connected loosely. They, they it will come apart easily. You close up the toe and the heel, toe and the heel, fold it down, fold it down. You can take the arm and bring it forward. You can take this arm and bring it forward. And tab the arms together. I don't know why this is battling me. So now we have the bottom done, we have the top done. Now, the instructions make it look like you just make the guy sit down by moving the hip hinge. You don't. You have to move the entire waist. The body kind of like does it like an ab crunch and you move the entire waist and you bring this all together. When you bring it all together, you should be able to sort of line things up loosely. Now, bring this up on the side, come to the other side of the leg and bring it up. Just make sure all that is in. Then last but not least, take his head and push it down. It will stay down and in the end, boom, here we have him in his tank mode. Like, I guess it's an all right tank. It rolls, no problem. Like I said, the conversion is actually quite simple. Uh, it, it, it's good, actually. I kind of like it. It's a lot of, of like big, chunky, hefty parts. Uh, I don't feel like anything's gonna break on it, which is great for the intended age group here. Uh, he was getting a six. We'll say his conversion is a six. Maybe a seven. Overall, he's a six, six and a half. Like, it's not a standout, but it's not awful. You just have to give it to the right consumer. And it's a very specific consumer, a very specific child that's going to like this. It is, it's put out as like, you know, a wide release mainline thing. And I don't think it's going to appeal to the masses. It's going to appeal, appeal to a very small market. That said, this guy weighs in at 299 grams. So you're getting 299 grams of plastic here for 40 bucks. You're getting about 190 grams here for roughly 40 bucks. Big difference in the amount of plastic used. Using a traditional leader here like Blaster, uh, we have about 327, 328 grams, but this guy cost, at the time of his release, about 60 bucks. So I think it sort of shakes out like this when it comes to pricing structure. You got the leader on the end. He has pretty great articulation. He also has the most plastic. That's why he's the most expensive. Then down on the end where uh, Siege uh, Megatron is, we have the smallest, the least plastic content, but arguably the most parts count and the best articulated. And right smack dab in the middle, you have less articulation, but more plastic than the Siege. And you have less articulation and less plastic than the Leader. His pricing structure would naturally fall right in the middle, somewhere around 40 bucks. I get it, I get it. In dollars and cents and in terms of materials used and whatnot, and engineering costs, the $40 makes sense, but in terms of just being a toy that the average consumer is going to see on the shelf worth 40 bucks, we potentially run into the problem that has plagued a lot of collectors in recent years. That this guy, despite all of the business side of it making perfect logical sense, most people, as they just pick it up, hold it in, in their hand, you know, from the toy shelf, will say, hey, you know, I don't think it's worth that. And they'll wait for a sale. And I think that's understandable. Like I said, this is a great, around here, it's a great $15 toy. I don't normally do this, but we'll do the conversion back because it's super simple as well. So how do we do the conversion back? Well, we open out this and this first. Once we have that done, we can take his arms and also open them out to the side. We can straighten up his body and that will automatically pop up his head. Bring the arms down by the side and split his legs. Put that tab in, come to the back, flip out the foot, come to the back, flip out the foot. The heel will automatically come out as you bring the toe forward. We plant him down and he's standing up again. So overall he's a six. 
It's not a stellar toy. It's not a good toy. It definitely would have fallen for me in the worst toys of 2018 list. Now, some people might look at that and feel sad and be like, he's not that bad. He's not, but only if you're getting it for the right kid. I've said that before and I stand by wholeheartedly. For the average fan, the average uh, collector, I think, like I said, he's a six. But for the right kid, and for the right fan, who is kind of an emerging fan, has a bit of experience, but not too much, he's probably a solid nine. And here we are, and the only thing I can say is nope. No, here in Canada, this guy's not worth 40 bucks. He's a fine $15 toy. Fine. Fine for that, but not worth a dime more. Um, he's just, he's not. He doesn't even have elbows. How are you calling this thing ultimate when it doesn't have elbows? Now, I, like, again, I'm saying $15 toy. That's in Canadian funds. Like, use an exchange rate converter to know what it is in your neck of the woods. But whatever, it, you know, it converts to, don't pay any more than that because he's not worth it. It is not ultimate. He doesn't have elbows. He doesn't have a thigh swivel or a waist. His head can't move. That's not ultimate. Ultimate would mean ultimate. He has the ultimate uh, conversion, meaning it's perfect. He has the uh, ultimate gimmick. He has the ultimate paint apps. He has the ultimate articulation, and he has none of these things. It's a fine toy, but don't lie. Don't call it what it's not, because it's not. You can call it big class. It's big. You know? You can call it um, robust class, because it is robust. The plastic does feel pretty good. I don't think you're going to break anything. There's a very specific child that this will appeal to, and I say that because I don't think that it's going to appeal to anyone else. I really don't. Even longtime fans that collect kind of everything. I don't think that this is going to be the Megatron that they put out front and center in their collections because he's not that good. It's just not. I will give credit where credit is due. The Fusion Cannon's great. This is, I got to believe, aimed not only at kids, but aimed at a specific type of kid where they have a little bit of experience, but not very much. Like they're a step above. Rescue bots, you know, they're a step above that, but they haven't kind of graduated to more complex ones yet. It does have a place, but as a toy, compared to other mainline figures and other things that are on the shelf, this is at best a six. It's not great, and it's not great largely because of the limited articulation. Nevertheless, if you do have this guy, you might as well get the Optimus and have the pair. Like, don't get one and not the other. If you're going to have one, have both. It's as simple as that. It's not for me, but it is for somebody. And I'd love to hear who it is in your life that this guy fits the bill for. You know, I'd love to hear from you guys. Again, I'm going to say thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time. Please hit that subscribe button. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another one of these visits right here inside the videos.